Hello, my art-loving friends. I am Deborah Kay, and I welcome you to Paint with a Passion. Today, we're going to paint this super cool patchwork fish. It's super easy and super fun. Here's my recipe. You can pause here to gather what you need, or just refer to the list in the description area below this video. So get all your goodies together. Let's make the magic happen as we paint with a passion. Okay, so when you're painting on anything that's porous, I recommend you always use a gesso primer. It keeps your paint from soaking into the wood or whatever porous surface that you're painting on. You can get uh, canvases that are pre-primed or you can prime your own. Just remember to prime all the areas that you're going to paint on. And the bigger the area, the bigger the brush, and a little goes a long way. I like to use a coarse brush when I'm applying it because it covers easier. Also, the bristle type brush helps to create a wood-like texture if you're going to apply a thick coat of gesso. You can also add a little bit of paint to tint your gesso uh, if you don't want a white base. I'm using my largest stencil so I can easily find the center of the circle and tracing a vertical line straight across the stencil. Now I'm using a lead pencil instead of chalk because I'm going to paint over it instead of trying to erase it. Using my ruler, I'm going to make a vertical line above and below that center line to mark where the ocean floor should go. And I'm not sure if I want more water or more sand at this point, so I'm adding both lines. I'll start with the bottom most line and then I'll adjust and add more sand if I need to. I'm applying a generous amount of milk chocolate brown base to the area that's going to be my sandy bottom. Did I just say sandy bottom? Kind of sounds like the soggy bottom boys. But well, if you saw the movie, then you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I think I would definitely prefer to have a sandy bottom rather than a soggy bottom. I know, I know, stop me now. <sighs> I'm using a small bristle brush and I am using a crosshatch stroke to roughly cover the area. Sand is usually not just one color and not just flat, so this will give the appearance of a sandy ocean floor. Try to keep the top dividing line somewhat even, but don't worry if it's not perfect. I just want to make sure I have an evenish line below where we're going to add our fish. Next, I'm going to add little specks of white and black over the brown sand. Using a clean bristle brush, add just a tiny amount of paint to the tip and then dab it off on your palette and then ever so lightly, just barely tap in little random areas. Tap, 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 tap. And then once you tap on as many or as few of the white specks, do the same with the black. Now, if you overdo it in any areas, simply add a little bit of brown and tap back over those areas. You can use special stippling brushes for this, but since it's such a small amount, I found it easier to just use my little bristle brushes that are handy. And this doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be adding plants over the top. And so no matter what you do, it's going to look right. Um, you don't have to use brown either. You might want gray sand. Maybe you want volcanic red sand. Any colors you want. It's all your choice. That's the great thing about art. Now that we have our sand in place, it's time to add the ocean water. I'm going to use primary blue and just plain white. Now I want to create the illusion that the fish is deep in the water with just a little light breaking through from the surface. Starting along the sandy bottom, using a half inch bristle brush, I am adding the blue in a crosshatch pattern again and overlapping the sand just a little to create a super dark green line. It's gonna sort of look like vegetation. Is that what it's called in the ocean? I don't know. Anyways, um, I want it to look like a distant vegetation along the floor and it creates a nice transition between the sand and the water. Now I'm going to paint the blue all the way up until I have just a small area left at the top. And now I'm going to go back and uh, blend the transition between the water and the sand. 
and by adding a little brown and working it in just a quarter inch or so up and down along the seam where the blue meets the brown. If the blue is too dry to blend, you can dab just a little on the brush and keep dabbing until the blue and the brown make a dark greenish mark. It sounds awful, but it looks great. Now you'll notice that I'm always adding a little more paint. I like to use small amounts and just keep adding instead of pouring a bunch of paint out and then wasting it. All right, let's finish our background. Using a sponge, I'm adding a light coat of the blue over the top of what I already painted with the crosshatch. Now, I don't want to add too much paint because it will easily take over the white when I start to blend in. And now using a new sponge or flipping over your sponge if you have a double-sided sponge, use a generous amount of the white paint and start at the very top where there's no blue and really cover it good and white and then begin working your way down and blending it into the blue paint. Now you can blend down as far as you like. I want my background really dark against my fish, but you might decide you want your water lighter. Whatever you choose, again, it's gonna look great. And now just keep blending until you have it exactly like you want it. If you go overboard on the white or overboard on the blue, then just work in a little bit more of the opposite color. And you know, if you find that you get to a point where it's just murky and it's not working out, let everything dry, start over again. And just remember, a little bit of paint goes a very long way. And always just start with less paint and then keep adding to it as you go. Using my ruler, I'm drawing a line just above the midway point of the dark blue. Now I'm leaving some space and even amount um, on each side of the circle, kind of like margins of a document. Now, um, I also made a marker where the tail is going to start so that I leave enough room and uh, don't end up drawing my tail off the edge. Then I'm going to use my ruler to make a vertical, um, some vertical markers above and below my horizontal line, and I'm going to use that as a guide for the fish body. So voila, just connect the dots. Notice I'm using a white chalk pencil this time. It's so much easier to erase. And next I'm gonna add the eye area and then draw in the tail. Is it a tail on a fish? I think so, I don't know, but I'm going with it. Anyways, of course he needs some fins. So you can create any fins you like. Um, you can make them big little, skinny, fat, your fish. Your fish can be skinny, fat, uh, whatever shape you want. That's the beauty of art. Again, it's one of a kind and everything is your choice. Using a small round brush, I'm gonna start to add some dark green plants. Add as many or as few as you like, point them in different directions for variety um, some of them should overlap maybe, um, crossing over the others. And what we'll do to separate those is we're going to add a little bit lighter green to the tips and it'll look very much like the plants do at the bottom of the ocean where they're darker at the bottom and then they're illuminated on top.
Now I'm going to draw in the patch sections on our fish body and we're going to start to bring this guy to life. I'm going to go kind of geometric, but you can make any segments you want. Straight lines, curvy lines, anything you like. I do recommend though that when you make the sections, make them big enough that you can add a pattern inside each of the um, areas. And once you have your sections set just the way you want them, um, we're going to start painting in the base colors. So one of the fun things about this particular piece is I'm going to use a lot of colors. I'm going to use six colors plus black as an outline to um, fill in the fish and uh, the whole patch design. And there isn't really any rhyme or reason for the colors I chose except I wanted colors that are really going to pop against um, the background colors. Also, these just happen to be my favorite colors to paint with. So, You may notice that I'm painting out of my bottle caps. Some say this is a no-no and I agree to a point. In this case, I'm going to use a very small amount of paint and the cap's only going to be off the bottle for a very short time. Also, I'm not double dipping with any other colors. And if you've watched my other videos, you know how I feel about double dipping. Get out of my dip with that unflipped chip, mister! In this case, I'm making an allowance because I just don't want to waste the paint in my palette.
right, let's get these plants popping. I'm using a slightly smaller round brush and I'm going to apply citron green to the tips of my plants. Now I'm applying a thin coat to cover about half the height of the plants, uh, midway up to the top. Just make sure that you also apply uh, the paint, the lighter green to the tips that are overlapping the other strands so that they stand out as well. So now I'm going to outline the fish in black. I need to come up with a name for him. I haven't thought of his name yet. You can use any color you want to outline him. I'm going to use black, um, but you could use a color or even metallic might look really cool. I want to keep the spotlight on the designs and on the fish uh, patterns itself. So I am going to go ahead and go with simple black. Um, I will also outline each of the sections after I'm done uh, decorating them. <laughs>
All right, my lovely art friends, it's time to add our designs. We got our sand, we got our plants, we got our water, and we got Mr. Fish, who I still have to figure out a name for. Now we just need to add the icing to the cake. I'm going to use random colors and I'm gonna paint random designs to decorate each of the patches. Now you can replicate what I'm painting or you can fill in with whatever design you like. You can add lines, dots, swooshes, or any other shapes that you can think of. Take a look at ideas of um, fishes from the ocean. Take a look around your house at the patterns of fabric. So anything that you can think of to get ideas of patterns. I'm going to use colors that'll really pop against the background of each patch. So. I'm going to use my fine lining brush to separate each of the patches with black after I'm done decorating. And if you are interested in learning how to make your own fine lining brush, just check out my video on how to make a super skinny fine lining brush. And then the last part I'm going to do in this segment is give Mr. Fish an eyeball. Um, this is really going to bring uh, character and really bring him to life.
once you have Mr. Fish's eyeball uh, all set and it's dry enough to paint on top of, we're going to add the one accent that really, truly brings your character to life. And that is the reflection of light on the eyes. Now, I know that fish probably don't have light shining in their eyes under the water, but it does make it look great and I'm going with it. Now, you can add little light swooshes. You can add multiple dots. Take a look at photos um, of people on the internet or even ones that you've taken and you will notice that every single eyeball has a light reflection, a pattern. It's the final step, time to varnish. In my previous tutorials, I have applied varnish either using a spray varnish or with a brush. And from this day forward, whenever possible, when I'm not using a spray on varnish, I do declare I will be using this technique. I am tired of the streaks and I'm tired of the mess, especially when you're brushing on your varnish and it slops over the side. And so I'm going to use a mini foam roller and then the varnish of choice. Now, my varnish of choice lately seems to be whatever I'm lucky enough to find in stock. And today it's Liquitex. Um, now, using a small amount and just working quick, roll out your varnish over what you've poured onto your piece. And then check it in the light for any spots that didn't get covered and if you need to add a little more varnish here and there and just keep rolling it dries pretty quick so you want to get this done as fast as possible and also make sure you wash out your foam roller as soon as you're done or it will be garbage i'm pretty thrifty so you can bet i'm on my feet and headed to wash mine out the minute my coverage is complete all right, wow, look at our beautiful patchwork fish. How cool is this? I've painted these on rocks, and I even painted one on a big old river rock for my dad, who happens to be the greatest fisherman I know. I'd like to thank you so much for joining me today to paint with a passion. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to painting again with you real soon. Let me know what you think, and also let me know what you'd like to see in future tutorials. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification button so you know as soon as I post a new video. I wish you peace, love, and happiness now and always.